Hello friends, family, total strangers. Uh, I am here my last day uh, at the Cochise uh, Stronghold area. This is in the Dragoon Mountains. Uh, been here for the last couple of videos. It's been pretty, pretty nice. Um, yeah, so today's video is going to be um, how I cook in my van, the breakfast edition. <laughs> So I realized that I have a, a bunch of footage from breakfasts over the last few days and not really any dinners because I'm running out of out of food. <laughs> but um, yeah, I have a, a few different breakfasts and uh, I thought it would be fun to just kind of do a, a breakfast edition uh, of, of cooking in the van. So um, yeah, I've been, boy, have, have I been here like four, four days, five days? It's, it's been really awesome. There is a group <laughs> of like 25 Eastern uh, college students who is like some sort of spring break climbing camp <laughs> that moved in right next to me. And uh, this morning they were doing their whole meeting like on either side of my van. They split off into two groups and it was just like... I couldn't do couldn't do this video there, so I figured I would I would move it here and and uh, this is at a a horse trailhead. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna do my my final breakfast uh, in the Dragoon Mountains here and uh, and yeah, here we go. Uh, a quick note, I don't have to cook these potatoes all the way through. In fact, I don't want to cook all of them all the way through. So I'm going to pull some of them off. Uh, and then when I re reheat them tomorrow, they'll cook the rest of the way. And that way, they're not overcooked tomorrow. And today I can spread out the ones that I'm going to eat and they'll cook faster and get a better, better char. And you love me some breakfast. <laughs> Someone practicing fiddle. Pretty cool. So I have a couple of overripe bananas. So uh, rather than throw them away, I think I am going to try to turn them into banana bread. <laughs> so we'll see how this goes. Uh, it, I believe, is one egg a uh, quarter cup of butter, half a cup of sugar, three quarters a cup of flour, uh, self-rising, and then two bananas. And uh, that will make a small loaf that will fit in my Road Pro. So I've never done banana bread before. <laughs> well, I kind of got caught up in the process and forgot to film, forgot to film the making of it. But uh, yeah, super simple. And I have all these things in my van normally, including rotting bananas. <laughs> so uh, we'll see if this turns out or not. If it does, that'll be awesome. And it'll be something I probably do quite a bit in the future. Um, I had to crush the bananas by hand. It told me to use crushed bananas, and I didn't know what other way to do it. So that was kind of disgusting. <laughs> When you don't have a when you don't have a full regular sink to wash your hands in, so I'm trying to wash them with like a spray bottle, not <laughs> not ideal. But hey, if it works, if it works. And I misplaced my usual riser, which is a, uh, a mason jar lid. So I'm just going to use uh, my apple core. <laughs> Hopefully that works good. If you don't raise it up on the bottom, it'll definitely burn. So you have to use something for a riser. Okay, and then something close to two hours from now, we may have bread, uh, banana bread. There's the banana bread. I uh, haven't tasted it yet, but it looks good, so we'll see how it turns out. I don't know if you can hear the bluegrass music in the background, but uh, 
Some of my neighbors here at the Dispersed Camping are uh, bluegrass players, so I might go play with them in a little bit. Awesome. So I'm making something that I have never made in the van before, so we'll see how it comes out. It's something that I used to make all the time uh, when I had a brick-and-mortar house. Um, but, um, yeah, this is biscuits and gravy, so we'll see how the biscuits turn out in the in the Road Pro. I usually just use the Pillsbury Pop Can biscuits, just because they're so easy. Uh, I might try making my own biscuits one of these days. Uh, drop biscuits will probably be the easiest way to do it here in the van. But, um, yeah, for now we're just using the Pillsbury biscuits. They're pretty good, and, um, yeah, they're really easy. You just pop the can. <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, uh, never buy canned gravy or gravy mix for biscuits and gravy. It's so easy to make. It's It almost makes itself. So... I'll show you how I do that. So this is a half a pound of sausage. So we're just going to add some flour to make the roux. So we're just adding flour right to the uh, cooking sausage. So we're using all-purpose flour, not self-rising. And how much you add just kind of depends. Um, probably about a, an eighth of a cup for this much uh, sausage, but you just want it to essentially absorb all the grease. You want the sausage, you want the pan to more or less be dry. And then you want to cook the flour flavor off. So it'll take probably just a couple minutes to cook that, that flour flavor off, and then we'll be ready to add the milk. So yeah, that looks good. We'll let that cook for just a couple minutes. So we're just adding some sh uh, shelf-stable milk. Don't know if you can see that. So we add some milk, let it thicken up, and then once it thickens, you just add more milk and let it get to kind of the consistency that you want it to be. And then salt and pepper. And that is all that goes into sausage gravy. Super easy to make, super delicious, and it's so much better than those gravy packets or the canned gravy. And yeah, that's that's all there is to it. So final note, the biscuits took about 45 minutes in the Road Pro and um, they didn't brown on top or anything. And also they, uh, they didn't rise up a ton, but they rose up enough and they're definitely done. So yeah, there we go. Biscuits and gravy. Um, last note, the half pound of sausage is enough gravy for about four biscuits. And I generally have two biscuits, so this is two biscuits um, split in half. Um, so the rest of the gravy I will um, save for tomorrow. So if you wanted serving for, for four, you would do the full pound. If you wanted a serving for two, you'd do a half pound. I could have done a quarter pound just one serving, but I, I'd rather just have the gravy ready to go. All I have to do is heat it up in the pan tomorrow and throw a little more milk in there to thin it out. And there you go. So if I'm going to do something specialty like biscuits and gravy or or uh, hash browns or, you know, potatoes, country potatoes, something like that, I'll usually try to make up enough that I can use it, uh, you know, like a, a couple more extra servings. That way I can do combination breakfasts uh, the, next, the next day or two, which is nice. So... Um, that's uh, what I'm gonna do this morning. I'm gonna do a um, I'm gonna do a breakfast burrito using some of the country potatoes that I have, and uh, here we go. Breakfast burrito. That looks
looks pretty good. Uh, so just a couple quick things. Uh, enchilada sauce is a great thing to have in the van, whether you want red or green or both. Uh, it's great for making wet burritos, uh, which is, yeah, what I just had for, for breakfast there, uh, uh, wet breakfast burrito. But you can also just do that for a lunch or dinner, um, you know, with a beans and rice burrito or or whatever. And, um, yeah, the other thing I wanted to say was uh, the presentation. <laughs> you might think it's ridiculous to do a presentation for one. Uh, and you might think that I'm just doing that just for the camera, but I, I don't. Even when I don't even take a picture, um, I still do a presentation just for me. Like, uh, food is, it's a full sensory experience. And when something looks really good, it just builds the anticipation before you eat it. So I like to have it look really good. You know, it's, food is, yeah, it's, it, it's all five senses. You know, it's the smell. It's the taste, obviously, but it's also how it looks, the texture or how it feels. And then the, the sound of it sizzling in the pan also helps, you know, build the anticipation of, yeah, I love food. <laughs> yeah, it, I'm sure it does. All right. So a special thank you to Raleigh and Carol and uh, Ninja, that's the dog. <laughs> that was really fun. It was Cherokee Shuffle. Uh, I, I wasn't able to take any leads on any of the songs we played because it was all, it was all songs I don't know because yeah, it's funny how you know you can have <laughs> people playing the same type of music and not know any of the same songs. There's so many traditional songs out there. But uh, yeah, it was really fun. So. Um, Thanks for watching. Uh, please like, subscribe, comment, all that stuff. Thanks a bunch.
Thank you.